It's so great to see you again, Laura. You know, you, you bloom wherever you're landed. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you very much. So now as director of Parks and Rec for the city and county of Honolulu, you have a very wide embrace. Can you share with us where we are with the parks and what you envision is possible for us? Uh, well, thank you. Uh, it's been a wonderful few months here at the Department of Parks and Recreation. I've really enjoyed um, learning about the department, meeting the staff and meeting all the different park users. I have much to learn, but it, it's just been a, a great experience. And I guess the first thing I would say is that I think there's been a real renewed appreciation for parks, given the pandemic and what everyone's been going through over the last year. It was interesting that, you know, how many people just needed to get out to these open spaces. And, and I come to parks from having been at the Department of Land and Natural Resources. And, you know, I have a real appreciation for the importance of these open spaces. And um, some of them are cultural lands, but just access to recreation, opportunity to get out of, you know, hot, small, multi-generational houses into the open air, down to our beaches. You know, this is, this is why we live here. And people have been coming out in droves during the pandemic. We run not just the city parks, but also the five botanical gardens. And Ho'omalohia had been keeping tabs of the number of people coming in, which was ticking up quite a lot under the tourism increased numbers. Their attendance numbers went up when tourism shut down because so many local residents started saying, okay, where can I go? And then remembering, hey, we've got this fantastic botanical garden. I'm going to go walk there. And, and so it's been wonderful to see residents getting out and remembering our parks and, and our gardens. And we've been really happy to be a part of that. It warms my heart as well, because we have 24-7 beautiful weather usually. And now when we look at the future of parks, now you know you're aware, or we're aware that the, the public enjoys being in parks. What do you foresee as the future? A couple things. Uh, the public enjoys being in the parks, but we recognize that our parks are not in the condition that we want them to be in. And so I've been talking with our trade section that does a tremendous amount of work on renovating parks, restoring them, and, and maintaining them. And what they told me is that if we didn't have to deal with vandalism, the places, you know, we could get ahead. We could make every place look better but they are spending about 90% of their time addressing vandalism, trying to get places back into operation. Some of it is in, in intentional and some of it is just careless behavior like flushing things down toilets that break the, the pipes and close down the bathrooms for a while. I think the other challenge we have is a lot of our parks were designed back in the 1970s and 80s and maybe even 90s. And the mentality at that point is, you know, have a, a flat open field, maybe have a playground and a court, and then that's your park. It really isn't enough to drive enough people out to these parks to have them be active enough to deter the bad behavior. And so they become a little less welcoming because we don't have the facilities in the parks or the activity uh, in the park that's going to drive more people out there. And so I think that's one of the biggest changes we need to deal with on Oahu. We have a limited amount of land. And so how can we make the most of the parks that we do have to maximize the ability of people to come out to them and keep avoiding the bad behavior by activating them in that way? I think that when we think of our parks, um, organized sports, ASO, HISA, you know, come into mind. And yet, uh, walking around my park recently with my dog, there's many activities that are going on. Um, do you foresee that happening more in the future? I do. Organized sports are always going to be a big part of our culture in Hawaii and a big part of our parks. That said, there's a lot of kids who don't get into the um, kind of more elite level of play or the families that can't afford the dues of the clubs and they wanna have an opportunity to play sports. So we need to have some, a little bit more disorganized sports. There's also a lot of kids and adults that are not necessarily into the competition or into different types of activities. And we want to be able to foster those as well. And I think, again, going back to this idea of activating our parks, if we wanna give opportunities to everyone, 
and we want to make sure our parks are active so we can deter bad behavior, I think it's time for us to have some hard conversations about welcoming mixed use of areas. Because if we have mixed use, then you have people being able to use the park all times of day. Uh, maybe during school, you know, when the kids are in school and people tend to be working and you don't have an organized sports activity, you know, you have things in a park where retired people can go and work on adult exercise equipment. You have walking paths, you know, around a field so that people can be taking laps and things and maybe find uh, better dog park areas for a lot of people that are interested in that. But, it, you know, finding ways to creatively mix and overlay different types of uses within the same park, I think, is going to be the key to um, being able to serve all our population and being able to have parks that are, are safe and healthy and welcoming environments. Well, and as we wrap up our conversation for today, what thoughts can you share with the audience in terms of participating in helping the parks to become more alive, let's say? Well, we have all of our permitted activities, so we're working now with the organized sports to reopen them. We have kept open Adopt-A-Park and other types of group activities that people may want to come out and do a program. Uh, we would like to work with people, and we're trying to expand that to have other, you know, community garden type of ideas that people can take ownership and stewardship over over the long term. So, again, it's finding ways to work with the community. These parks are our parks. It, you know, they don't belong to the city. They certainly don't belong to me. And so what we want to do is have more community involvement in the parks and uh, help make those ideas come to fruition. Well, it's certainly refreshing to see people out and about right now. Um, and for myself as well, to be out in the fresh air. Um, and I hope that you're enjoying the parks as well, personally. I am getting to go to a lot of the parks as part of my job, so it's one of the benefits, and so I am really enjoying it. There's there's a, little, a lot of things around the island, even though I grew up here and have lived here most of my life, that uh, you know I haven't seen, so it's really neat to go out and see them now. Well, thank you very much for your continued service to our community and um, also for your enthusiasm now to get to know the parks a little better. It's a privilege to be in the job. Mahalo for joining me in my conversation with Laura Thielen, who is the director of the Honolulu City and County Department of Parks and Recreation.